Right now, lawmakers in Springfield are negotiating the state's 2025 budget. But a watchdog group wants them to know, spend carefully and avoid more tax increases or Illinois could be headed for financial disaster. That's because when the next fiscal year starts in July, Illinois could be operating at a budget deficit. It's first since the start of the pandemic. The Civic Federation, which is a nonpartisan government research group, analyzed Governor Pritzker's proposed budget, and they have both praise for what they think works and concerns for what they say doesn't, including warning about a financial crisis coming for transit agencies, CTA, Metra, and PACE. For more, we'll turn now to Joe Ferguson, who's president of the Civic Federation. So good to have you back, Joe. Hey, Sasha. So you're warning about a, quote, fast approaching uh, looming fiscal crisis. Now, before we get to that, as I mentioned, the lawmakers are currently in Springfield uh, negotiating what does and doesn't get into the next budget. Your group said in its latest report that there are fiscal challenges to be, you know, reckoned with. So talk more about that. Yeah. So first, a little bit of level setting, um, uh, because we've all been talking doom and gloom for quite some time. And it's not that the doom and gloom isn't still out there. Um, But I think there needs to be some recognition um, that uh, over the last four years, the Pritzker administration has done a number of things that fall well within the heartland of fiscal responsibility. Um, You know, the conversation is had as to whether or not the governor is a pragmatic progressive. Um, Some say he's not pragmatic. Some say he's not progressive. Um, but there's reason to say he is both. He is a fiscally he is a fiscally responsible, at least in the way that things have been done, um, uh, executive right now that is leaning into more progressive policy without retrenchment back to the practices that got us into the deep hole that we are in. Mm-hmm. That hole five years ago involved a lot of debt um, that uh, has been settled, not paying our bills. We were $16 billion behind paying our, our, our vendors and creditors and so on and so forth yeah. um, with respect to, to the regular cycle. That's down to about, depending on how you calculate it, $3 billion. Um, uh, there has been an advanced early payoff of all sorts of debt obligations, some of it uh, the utilization of COVID money for those structural ills. And so we're in a much more um, fiscally stable place than we have been in a long time. In a sense, um, I'm sort of uh, saying to folks, look, um, high school diploma, congratulations. Uh, It's time for college. And that is sort of dealing with not just this year, which is the first time in in three or four years that we've had to deal with deficit budget budgeting. Mm -hmm. Um, That has been effectively done through a number of of tax and revenue adjustments um, that puts the governor in a position of a balanced budget, right. um, uh, but um, it's also the case that a few days ago that the governor told um, the heads of state agencies find $800 million because we're not sure that we're going to get everything approved in Springfield. So level set, better place than we've been in a while. Yeah. Issues now, issues, bigger issues in the future. And we'll get to some more of those positives, but let's let's start with the issues. As I mentioned, that fast appro- approaching looming fiscal crisis that the CTA, Metra, and PACE, you say, could be facing – It sounds dire. So talk about how big of an issue this is and how fast it really is coming for these transit agencies. So it's um, uh, this is uh, this is real. Um, uh, There is nobody that's disputing the fact that uh, the estimates right now, which are seven hundred thirty million dollar deficit for the next fiscal year out. Um, is real. Um, uh, And that comes from uh, a couple of things. But Chicago's uh, certainly Chicago and regional public transportation has not caught up to ridership the way it has in the rest of the country. And so there are still depressed revenues um, that are an important part of the picture. Um, Operating costs um, that um, uh, sort of continue to escalate. And uh, what, what the Civic Federation has done, and not alone, was the first in a sequence of events in the last few weeks, has said, look, um, this crisis moment, never let a crisis go to waste, is mm-hmm. what Rahm Emanuel always told us, um, uh, is a leverage moment. And it's a leverage moment to address what is a generationally stale and not working governance structure. And our position, and this was working off of, of uh, a CMAP report at the turn of the year for which the Civic Federation was part of the working group, that offered three different possibilities. Okay. Um, uh, uh, and one of them was adjustments to the existing system. Another was substantial enhancement of the power and the authority 
of the Regional Transit Authority mm -hmm. to manage the whole in some respect. And a third was consolidation. So and if these changes don't happen, what does that mean for frequent transit riders? What it means is there's, on the basis of recent past history um, and uh, poor performance uh, on recent past history, there's not necessarily a reason to think things are going to get better. Transit financial issues aren't the only thing in this analysis, Joe. What else did you look into? Um, we uh, well, so so the main the main objective is to actually analyze the current year um, budget proposal. Mm -hmm. And in addition to a number of the positives that we noted, we we looked at the particulars as to how how the administration was proposing to balance the budget this year. There are a couple of things that actually are going to be the subject of conversation and some controversy uh, in Springfield over the next couple of weeks. Most notably. Um, the um, the ending of the so-called grocery tax, mm -hmm. um, which is um, a one percent tax um, on groceries, um, we and we're not the only ones to have noted this. This is broadly understood to be a fairly regressive tax. Everyone has to buy groceries, right? Um, uh, but it is also the source of a very significant amount of money that flows down from the state to localities, $325 million. And so we've raised concern. We understand as a, as a, as a, as a revenue move why this is being done. Um, but the impact on localities is pretty significant. And one of the things that um, I intend to be l having the Civic Federation look for looking at going forward is the relationship between governmental budgets. What we tend to do is look at each one of those siloed on its own terms and not very much um, focus on, one, the composite picture, and two, what the impact of one, uh, especially the state's, budget is on localities. Yeah. And, of course, as we alluded to earlier, it isn't all bad news in this report. You had some praise for the state uh, of our finances, specifically uh, the state's resilience before and during uh, the pandemic. Yes. Talk about that, some of the challenges that you saw the state overcome financially. So it, 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 all governments receive some form of flow down, subsidy, um, uh, Recovery Act money, COVID, uh, and, and immediately after. Um, how that money was used really has a lot to do with um, the fiscal stability and health of governmental bodies. And what the Pritzker administration did was utilize a lot of that money to actually address structural ills. Money that is owed, um, uh, I mean, some of, the, some of the money was devoted to program mm -hmm. to address um, uh, people in situations that were affected by COVID and the impact of the economy. But a lot of it was was directed to um, addressing or speeding up the payments of debts that actually um, constituted real time pressures on on the state. And one of the consequences of doing that, whether it's pension debt, whether it's um, past due bills, and and so on and so forth, one of the consequences is a sequence of um, uh, improvements to the rating to the to the bond rating agency's assessment of the state. What that in turn does, yeah is it makes it um, uh, less expensive for the state to borrow, um, uh, money needed going forward um, for various purposes, um, but it also signals a healthier climate overall um, uh, to businesses and otherwise to say, hey, look, this doesn't look like the free fall situation. It might have looked uh, like mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, and this may actually be a safe haven, coupled with the governor's very proactive lean into green technology, next wave economy stuff, those things all come together to paint um, something of a hopeful picture. So we talked a bit about uh, Governor Pritzker's uh, you know, proposed ideas for, for these tax revenues to sort of help offset the expected deficit. One of your recommendations in the report, Joe, is for state officials to develop a tax structure for a sustainable future. So what we what we tend to do, and it's, it's natural um, at all levels of government, is we tend to create budgets at the margin on the basis of last year's budget, right. on the basis of the problems that we that continue to carry forward with. Um, my earlier mention, we're graduating from high school right now, it's time to take college courses, really goes to addressing larger structural holistic issues. And one of the things, for example, that we know is that our state tax structure 
is not aligned with its economy. We have a disproportionate amount of taxes that that are collected for for the the, the base for the state that come from income taxes rather than sales taxes. Income taxes tend to be more volatile in the first place. Um, that's mitigated somewhat in the state by the fact that we have a flat tax rather than a progressive tax, having that been rejected a few mm-hmm. years ago in a referendum. Um, but but um, 60% of our revenue base comes from income taxes. Uh, that is that is not aligned. Second, sales tax, which is another major source of revenue. There's three income tax, corporate tax, sales tax. Right. With respect to sales tax, we are lagging the country way behind, out of out of alignment with not taxing services. So what does that signal to you? Um, that signals to me that um, what we do is we put incredible pressure on the other forms of taxes um, uh, and um, uh, are not availing ourselves of an opportunity. And, you know, it's not a firm position. It needs to be examined. But it, it, it is time to examine the fact that if we broadened the base that we tax, mm-hmm. we can lower rates make taxing uh, the taxes in the state um, more progressive, less regressive. Um, when we're talking about professional services, we're talking about things that working class people tend not to be buying, and it's more people in the middle class, upper middle class, the upper class. Yeah. And in that sense, it makes it more progressive, and it also renders things more sustainable um, over a long time. So you give the governor credit in this report for paying down $11 billion in debt back in 2022 through the 2024 fiscal years. So this also means that the state has an upgraded credit rating, right? Right. What does that mean for the next time that we want to borrow money? It, it, it means that it costs us less to borrow money. And we absolutely have to borrow money for all sorts of purposes. Um, but this means that we are more reliable from, this, from the perspective of the, of the ratings agency. Um, a more reliable debtor, which means the rates are lower, which means we pay less interest, which means it costs us less to do the things that we want to do mm-hmm. to foster economic growth and otherwise. I'm trying to find all the silver linings here, yep. right? Uh, state pensions, you talk about that too. I mean, should we be worried here? Um, look, we, we, we should always be worried. We're, we're basically um, uh, on a, uh, a 50-year plan right now. And what the governor has proposed is a couple of things here. One is to raise the ultimate level that of funding to 100 percent. It's been set at 90. Folks would say that's good, but it's not good enough. It's not, not really what the best practice is. The governor has said, let's go to 100. We will extend out for three years that 50-year plan. And additionally, um, as certain forms of debt obligations are retired, we're going to devote certain of the monies that we had been using for that purpose, specifically for pensions for the pay down. The second thing is, um, about 10 years ago, we created a second tier of a pension system, tier two, which is lower benefits altogether. Um, That system uh, is probably due for a couple of tweaks to make sure that it is viable. The governor has put on the table um, uh, the question of whether it's time to do that, uh, so long as the analysis is done. Um, we've taken a position along with um, the Civic Committee of the Commercial Club and the BGA recently yeah. in an op-ed to say it is time to do it. The, the financial consequences of not doing it is sending us sort of in the reverse direction of where we've been going with respect to the pay down of den- pension debt. So leave us with a very quick final thought then. What are you trying to say overall to state officials? Um, this is good. Um, let's bring this year's budget in, um, but let's bring this year's budget in um, with a mindfulness that we need to start to go about um, more holistic examination of our budget to make the resets. There you go. That's your plug. <laughs> the resets that are necessary to truly render us on the upswing. Joe Ferguson is the president of the Civic Federation. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy to be here.